Hi, my name is Marius Paul Isken. I will present the INSAR Software Toolbox Kite. With Kite, we can prepare and process satellite surfaces placement data for earthquake and deformation modeling. First, we'll look at surface displacement processing with Kite. The atmospheric phase screening correction, data noise analysis, and the data reduction using a quad tree compression. Then we will see how we can use Kite's powerful GUI to inspect and manipulate the data. And lastly, we will integrate the data set into GONT, which is an earthquake inversion framework, looking at example data from the 2019 Ridgecrest events. So which problem is Kite solving? On the one side, we have very powerful SAR and INSA processors, like SNAP from ESA, Gamma, Roy Pack, and a growing number of online INSA processing centers, like the ARIA servers from NASA. On the other side, we want to model this high-resolution satellite surface displacement data, say co-seismic displacements from earthquakes or volcanic unrest, using geophysical methods. And in between, we need to process this very high-resolution INSA data. We have to apply corrections, we have to mask the data, we have to detrend the data, and we have to subsample the data, which is crucial since we cannot model high-resolution multi-megapixel scenes efficiently. We also have to quantify the data noise, which is then propagated into our forward modeling codes. Here, in this scheme, we see the surface displacements from a shallow strike-slip earthquake in Myanmar, which ruptured in 2011. Kite imports data from most common INSA processing suits and services, and also time-series products from stamps. Okay. We start with the atmospheric phase screen correction. When the satellite sends out a radar wave, the wave is passing through the Earth's atmosphere. The speed of light changes with the atmosphere's density and electron content. This effect distorts the two-way travel time of the radar wave, depending on regional and local changes in the atmosphere's temperature and humidity. These atmospheric models can be generated from regional weather data. Correction models are provided by the GATECOS service from Newcastle University. A 2D grid with differences in two-way travel time, as we can see here in this plot, where we can already see a strong correlation with the topography and lower atmosphere. And secondly, we can derive the APS correction from the correlation of apparent displacement with topography. This is a purely data-driven approach. KITE supports the import of GATECOS models, and we can derive the phase screen from topographic correlation. Then, for modeling, it is crucial that we quantify the noise in our displacement data. We can derive this information from a noise window, which is undisturbed by our signal. The noise we see comes mostly from residual atmosphere, ionospheric effects or decorrelation errors. We can then calculate the variance and covariance for our data, where the covariance is a function of distance. When we have corrected and characterized our data, we can use a quad tree to compress the amount of data. Here we see again the surface displacements of the 2011 Myanmar earthquake at different levels of compression. The quad tree's tile size is mainly driven by the variance of the underlying full resolution data. This approach leads to fine resolution and small tiles in regions with large changes, and big tile sizes in regions with the small lateral changes in displacement. We need to reduce the effective resolution of our data because our forward modeling codes could not handle the full resolution data effectively. A similar compression strategy is used in digital image compression, for example. Okay, let's look how Kite works. Alright, now we can open an INSAR scene in Spool from the 2019 Ridgecrest events in Kite's native format. Spool is the GUI which comes with the Kite toolbox. The data is provided by NASA's Area Processing Services. In the main window, we can see the cumulative displacement of the Ridgecrest sequence. Let's change into the APS tab. 
Here in the scene APS, we can see the displacement data draped on the background topography. On the right hand panel, we can see the topographic correlation with the displacement. The APS model can be applied by checking the Apply APS checkbox in the left side panel. We can now change to the covariance tab up here. We can see that the data covariance is rather well behaved. We choose a region which represents the noise in our data. A right click here brings up the noise window for inspection. In the lower right panel, we can see the covariance analysis as the solid white line. The red dashed line shows our analytical covariance model. In this case, a simple exponential model. In the upper plot, we can see the variogram and the green dashed line show the pixel's intrinsic variance. Then we can change into the Quadri tab up here. The green dots show the tile's center of gravity, the center coordinate of the tile. We can change the epsilon, which is the variance threshold, and increase the Quadri's resolution. Other parameters, like the minimum and maximum tile size, can also be changed here. Nodes can be deleted by right-clicking, selecting them and hitting the delete button. Once we are happy with the configuration, we can start the calculation of the full covariance matrix. This can take minutes to hours, depending on the scenes and quadrees resolution. When we have prepared the scene for forward modeling, we can save the scene and exit spool. Now we have prepared the scene and saved the kite container. We are ready to use the satellite data for earthquake source inversion. Okay, this is a brief introduction into GONT, an earthquake inversion framework using Bayesian bootstrapping. GONT has a modular architecture and can not only invert inside displacements, but also GNSS surface displacements and seismic waveforms. Also, the seismic source model can be exchanged we can invert for point models, such as double couples or moment tensors, or extended source models, such as rectangular fault planes. For the 2019 Ridgecrest sequence, we will only use static displacements from the previously prepared inside data, together with the local GNSS surface displacements delivered by the University of Reno. We'll skip straight to the results of Grunt. If you want more information on the inversion framework, Check out the resources at pyroco.org or our referencing literature. Now Grant has finished the inversion. First, we look at the INSAR data. From left to right we see the observed INSAR displacements, the best fitting model and the model residual. This here is now the ascending and descending scene. Since our displacement data is including the whole Ridgecrest sequence, we can see that we have large modeling errors, especially south of the main rupture. These are the misfits of the GNSS dataset. Here, the black arrows indicate the empirical ground truth displacement for the horizontal components, and the red arrows show the model data. Same here for the vertical component. In the sequence plots, we can see the convergence of the model parameters. Up here, the top panels show the easting and northing, the location of the fault plane. We can see that the model is converging, and from 60,000 iterations on, we have a quite confined solution for most model parameters. The histograms also show the uncertainties of the model parameters. From the spatially very constrained dataset, we can see that we have a good location of the fault plane. 
In the solution of the length, there's a bimodal distribution of the models. Same for the width, and more so the slip and dip. What we can tell from these uncertainties and distributions is that a single model cannot represent the more complex sequence of the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquakes. I hope you get a good idea what KITE can do and how it can help in earthquake rupture modeling. Here we see this example with the GONT. KITE and GONT is open source and available at paroco.org.